All right, we're live on Facebook. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Greg, Rich. How are you? Doing okay, man. How you doing? Welcome back, Rich. Doing all right. Sorry about last week, everybody. I have a quick uh, apology to make. Uh, I had a catastrophic meltdown uh, with my hardware uh, literally minutes before we were to go live, yeah. and it just completely threw a wrench in my spoke. So I, I just want to apologize to everybody. Um, that is well, a little bit out of the norm for me. So, you know. Well, welcome back, man. You're looking, you're looking good, man. Clear camera, bright, sound good. Right, Greg? He's looking good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, good, man. Welcome back. Yeah, Thanks. Uh, yeah. Glad to have you back with us. And yeah, everything is, uh, you know, relatively okay for on my end, uh, I guess, you know, just trying to progress through everything. Um, yeah, I think. Triggered and to re re uh, reevaluate everything that you pick up from uh, in the Armenian realm and actually outside of the Armenian realm as well that I'm personally you know if we wear our flags on our sleeves I'm a person that believes in science and has issues at what I'm seeing happen right now which is the you know the rampant rampant uh, what do you call it skyrocketing of the delta variant in America that's just me you could be an anti-vaxxer if you want I'm just saying this and by the way I'm seeing a lot of arguments for people just saying that just like I have my statements to make about everything that I see is wrong and right in the geopolitics, I'm also going to say it in the science world as well. You know what I mean, um, absolutely. So it's that's that's you asked. That's my that's what's on my mind. Yeah, no, no, it, it's concerning. It is concerning. We're seeing all this, you know, resurgence of cases now. Um, you know, I think we knew that that could happen, right? Uh, but it's. You know, it, it's avoidable, it seems, or it could be yeah, avoidable. That, that, is the, that is the frustrating part, is that a lot of things are avoidable. A lot of things, but, you know, such is the human nature of our, you know, sinful existence. I'm a Christian believer in that, and that's why, that's why, that's how I use, that's the terminology that I frame things in. Um, so, at yeah. the end of the day, no matter how much you try to make things perfect, I don't think they will be. But we got to keep trying. That's the whole purpose of being human. And uh, maybe enjoy life while we're doing it. So... Well, Whoa, we went philosophical there, but uh, that's all right. Well said. I, I just want to thank all of uh, just the support we've been, we've been receiving from uh, our followers, uh, gaining followers, uh, people sharing, commenting, people messaging us on the page, asking when we're going live. So thank you so much uh, to all to everyone out there, and uh, thank you for your patience with us last week on the late start, and uh, we got a lot to cover. This week, right? Uh, Rich, should we tee it up? Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot to cover. Everything from uh, new threats from Aliyev, but you know, what else do we expect? Of course, that he's going to keep on doing that. Uh, we've got further escalations on uh, the aggression now on the Naichiban border. Uh, we've got some news coming out of the Biden camp, uh, who appointed a new ambassador to Turkey. Um, it's that's important for us to talk about what that means and who he is and a little bit of his background, uh, because that's going to give you some context. Uh, and then, you know, the EU has pledged some significant aid. I mean, worth enough, worthy enough for us to talk about. Uh, so we have a great show with a lot of great topics. So uh, let's just jump right in because we've got a lot to cover, a lot to cover in a relatively short amount of time. Um, you know, before we do, I just want to make sure everybody knows uh, we are trying to get this content out as uh, thoroughly and quickly as possible. We, we, the three of us spend a lot of time looking for articles, putting a show together. Uh, we are not uh, a media source that, you know, actually has people out in the field. So we're collating this information and we're trying to have good dialogue about it. And hopefully we bring some value to you through that. And to, um, add, that, to add that by not extending the, 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 the time is that, yes, uh, we started this as a way to kind of inform the community around us. David keep mentioning that that it's now more than just the Northern California and, and LA and Sacramento, of course, right? Obviously, the, such is the reach of the internet. But the point was always to, hey, how do we bridge that gap between people seeing what's happening and not getting what's happening? And that's why we get this context going. Um, and yes, we are here to have those pertinent conversations to talk about the news that we think is important. Um, Likewise, it's notable to mention that today we do not have a guest, which we typically do, um, but we will moving forward. And, but some, you know, some days we do not. And today right. is one. Of them. Okay. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot to cover too. So it probably is helpful. That right. We have more time to cover the news, but right. yeah. Right. Well said guys. Well said guys. Um, yeah. Let's jump in. Let's okay. do it. Uh, yeah. 
the I, I, Greg, I mean, I think the first and Rich, I think, Greg, when we spoke a few days ago, you actually brought this to my attention. I had unplugged for a second on looking at the news every single moment and did not see renewed threats and actually not just renewed, but new warnings, new threats from Aliyev. Uh, so here we are, uh, any, you know, short of just calling out, calling for war, President Aliyev has warned Armenia to get down to nego negotiations on a peace treaty and to not make another mistake. That's his quote, to yeah. not make another mistake. This is, this is, again, you know, the double down. Like, I've heard a lot of analysis around what's happening with this. Um, well, first of all, it's no no different than it was. Um, he's been emboldened in the recent years. Now he's further emboldened. Um, uh, again, especially since the war. His right? threats are... His not to make another mistake is the preemptive threat to Armenians not to walk away from any of those nine points that were made in the, the nine points of capitulation, aka right. sometimes the co called as a cease, uh, what do you call it, a cease, cease treaty or ceasefire uh, right. um, agreement. That being said, the reason why this man, uh, well, what this man is saying is egregious. And again, it's, it warrants my criticism to the entire Armenian nation. So for example, there's Nahichevan. The fact that we didn't talk loudly about it resulted in them being able to take Artsakh. And I can dive into that at another time. Right. Maybe on the comment section, whoa, Greg, what are you talking about? I'll, I'll explain. Right. The fact that we uh, are now not talking about Artsakh a lot of Armenians, a lot of diasporans, a lot of people I talk to, and I talk to a lot more than I really should, more than I should uh, for my mental health. Um, we're talking already about Artsakh in this kind of a, well, you know, whatever. And because of that, right, this man is further emboldened to say the things that he's saying. And what is he saying? He's saying we are going to take Western Zangezur, and which, which means that, you know, Zangezur is Sunik is already theirs, but everything else is also theirs too. They have a name for Lake Sevan. They have a name from Yerevan. So literally, um, this is the, the rhetoric that he's spewing, right. claiming threat to the entirety of Armenia. Again, why? You could say a lot of things. Partially that he's not a smart man because he should be uh, preying on the administration that we have. And in reality, he's really slowly pushing even Pashinyan up against the wall with these uh, egregious threats. Um, that's so, so. That's um, my take. Uh, yeah. I, I would also say that you know, oil money goes a long way for people who don't know or don't care. So you know, when you when you can host, um, you know, soccer tournaments there. When you can host, you know, uh, you know, Formula One there. When you can host these large events with a lot of money, that that goes a long way to wooing people. And I'm sure we're going to get into that in a little bit, but. Um, you know, I mean, he can pull the wool over people's eyes because he's got the, the money to do so. Right, right. Yeah, you, you, you touched on it well, Richard, the sports washing that's happening, right? Uh, with, you know, they're covering up the POWs they're holding, plus these threats. People see these sport, these major sporting events happening in Baku, Azerbaijan, like, oh, Baku, Azerbaijan, how cool. Yeah, there's a lot going on behind that. And to me, this is just, th these are threats these are these are provocations, his remarks, and I would like to think the international community does not believe him or does not hold them to be true. Yet, to your point, Rich and Greg, this uh, Azerbaijan definitely has the leverage and the power right now, not Armenia. Um, and you know, we're seeing Pashinyan push back, right, rejecting these threats um, as in a re in response to this. However, the, some of the language is unclear to me, but you know, at least there's some pushback there, which I appreciate. Um, right, yeah. right. At least there is, right. He, you know, his quote is, Armenia will defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity by all possible and impossible means, including the mechanisms of the joint Russian-Armenian military contingent and the CSTO, Collective Security Treaty Organization, which we know did not even respond or did not even help uh, upon Pashinyan's request uh, with uh, Azeri soldiers on our lands. So, uh, you know, yes, it's good. He said something. We have to see wh where it goes from here. We have to hold him accountable, right? right. So um, 
he's saying this, right, guys? But then Greg, when I read this article or found this article, I thought of you right away because what for months you've been talking about this. Uh, he's so Pashinyan talks about how he pushes back on these threats, but then at the same time, he makes the claim that Azerbaijan's Azerbaijan's claim for Zangazor is tunic, right? Is their attempt to frustrate plans for open and free regional communications. Greg, you've been telling us for a while, and I will be honest, I've kind of been like, no, 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 that's not going to go anywhere. That's not real. Here it is. Pashinin is now openly saying it. Greg, I know you don't want to explain it, but why don't we explain to everybody what that means, free and regional communications? Well, I mean, there's, that means. there's infrastructure projects, right? Well, first of all, they want to integrate Armenia's economy into the regional economy. And what the regional economy is, we already are trading with Georgia and we already are trading with Iran. So that's so the next thing is to have the uh, the 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 borders uh, uh, open between Azerbaijan and Turkey. And clearly we as a collective national unit know who those people are. These are people that behead us. These are people that, you know, uh, bulldoze our churches. These are people that dance on our churches. We'll show that later on the other side. And these are people that commit genocide against us. So, but aside from that, there are also other repercussions that this will have. It will definitely unprotected uh, economic sectors will be devastated. Just talk to Georgia. And again, you don't have to listen to me. Look at what's happening in Georgia. And, but the unfortunate part of it is that a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, fat cat Armenians, there will be some Armenians that will get rich off of this, uh, the opening of the, of the economy. So if right. you don't do it smartly, it's going to be, it's going to be a disaster. And, uh, the Armenian ag industry is going to be the first one to uh, reel from uh, having, you just cannot compete with cheap Turkish uh, vegetables. We already can't do it with textiles because we don't have enough right. of our own, but you know, this is textiles. It's a little bit more niche. Number two, you're also talking about that I'm blocking the corridors, right? Which is building a freeway over Sunik. Again, I'm going to say that. I'm going to keep saying that. Building a structure, a corridor over a sovereign nation without having any customs duties levied while people are tra transversing it. And having already, by the way, you already are asking, well, we need to make sure that Nakhichevan is connected to Azerbaijan. What's well, already correct to connect it through Iran? Uh, that's how Nakhichevansis go to Baku, is they go to Iran and they go to uh, what do you call it, Baku, through that there's a, ne a network of freeways and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, the need to build the freeway over Armenia is to keep keep the boot, uh, the, 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 what do you call it, the, the shoe on our neck. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and the and the and the and the what do you call it? And the the people that are kind of uh, uh, ushering in that new era are the ones that actually I, I call the Davajan class. Regardless, regardless of you counter arguing that there will be, and the problem is that there might be a little economic uptick. There will be, and I mean, suddenly there's this. Right, you're opening that, trade, yeah, opening the, trade, know, with, right. yeah. but it's gonna be at the long, like again, where you know. You know, rich, like you said, like you know, the, I want the Mercedes now rather than the, you know, the 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 G wagon later. You know what I mean? I'd rather have. You know, so it's like, yeah. you know, it's like, you well, know, maybe not the best example, right? We're not going to well, be no. well in this understanding, but no, it, but there is a, but there is a trading the permanence for the temporary, and there's many Armenians, and I, you know, I, we I say this from a position of relative luxury. I recognize that there are many people in the, in, in in Armenia. And in Artsakh, who are saying, you guys live in America, you live in, America. It, you, you can't possibly know and see what happens here and understand how it feels to have shelling going on, all that. We want, we want some peace and quiet. And I totally under, I, I mean, as much as I can, I understand it. I may not have lived it, but I can conceptualize it. At the same time, is it, is it wise to exchange a temporary peace for the long term destruction of the nation so that, so that Armenia itself, can be a uh, like I've said before, like a uh, like some province, like some some a colony, like some uh, you know some some part of the Turkic Empire. I okay. I, I don't I don't want, I, that that's unt I, I can't I can't yeah, I don't even want to think about it. If, if we are to expand on that further, right? The need for Armenia to be essentially a bastion and a safety haven for Armenians is so important because we are a nation that's been genocided and thrown all over the world, right? So, for example, prior to 
uh, Armenians resettling back into Eastern Armenia by being pushed out of Urfa, Van, Erzurum, you know what I mean? Uh, and, and reconcentrating in Armenia. True, in a lot of places, Tabush, Sunik, and Ararat Valley, there were villages and yes, there were, there were Turks living there. Now, can you imagine when the borders are open, right? And all of a sudden they're gonna now push that next wave of what they can do in terms of reform. Oh yeah, like we'll, we'll you know, let's, let's have some of our Turkish immigrants now come and resettle. And you'll have that class of Armenians, just like the class that's selling me and some, I'm gonna point a picture at you and, and, and David telling me like, I'm being the naysayer, I'm not being right. the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being the right. negative guy here, right? So now yeah. you got this class of like uh, Turkish immigrants and there's these, this, uh, Armenians now going like, well, yeah, we're pro-immigration, right? Next thing you know, like there's way more of them than us. They could resettle the entire area, which they already are going to start doing with the right. Artsakh lands that they that they are occupying currently. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, so, we've we've seen flavors so of that here in California. We've seen flavors of that here all over the Western states in America. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, where and without diving into that, I don't want to divert, but yeah, I see exactly what you're saying, and that. That is a totally reasonable future. I mean, that's a totally reasonable uh, vision of what could come. Yeah, yeah. There, because- there is there cannot be any assumption that they have Arme- that anyone has Armenia's interests in mind. This is going to be like we're coming off of a brutal, brutal, devastating aggression. I don't. We're not in a place all of a sudden now. Okay, now, now, we, now we're peace. Look, to me, and I think you guys would agree. This is Aliyev's way of pushing his agenda, pushing just pushing more aggression, right? So really br- briefly, I'd like to show the map. I know David, you sent this to me for another purpose, but I, I want to spend 90 seconds on something really quickly for those people who don't know what we're talking about really quick. Is that is that okay with you guys? So what we're talking about is this whole section of Western Armenia, which is what I call uh, occupied Western Armenia, which is Eastern Turkey. Much of the ancestral lands that Turkey likes to promote and to have tourism come through here, this is all blood-soaked lands that, you know, our ancestors came from. And so when the Armenians were pushed to this small little enclave, um, this is what was left. And this is the Artsakh that was taken from us just recently. And what Azerbaijan is trying to do is connect these two spaces via this section right here. And what they're trying to do is box us into this and then say, all of this is theirs as well. And so this becomes a pan-Turkic empire. Well, well said. Yeah, and when that happens, and by, and by the way, and when that happens, uh, I'll continue that conversation since we're on this. When that happens, the United States with everything that we've seen the Biden administration do, right? Um, is only okay with all of it. Why? Because that is a further annoyance to essentially utilize that as a leverage against China. At which point, Armenia- And Iran. And Iran. At which point, Armenia is a non-player. And this is as much as we like me, 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 I'm important first Christian nation. Not always are we, you know, part of the equation and cared for, as a matter of fact, most of the time. So that's, that's you know, for us to understand the grand scheme of what's happening, okay? Yeah, and so when I say pan-Turkic empire, we're talking about Turkey through Azerbaijan into Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, this entire area, which came from the Mongols who marched this way and then ended up stopping in Turkey, which is what became the modern Turk. And so mm-hmm. what they're trying to do is box in Iran and box out China and create a huge, you know, Turkic empire. So, so, and if you look closely, you'll see that there's this tiny little country of Armenia who happens to be in the way of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. and this, so this is what we're talking about when we talk about these areas. And yeah, Rich, Rich, that was really, really uh, great, solid context, man. Um, and it's yeah. important for us to show that, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, and for, to further understand, like, why the frustration with this administration everything that's happening is that while we're losing land left and right right remember the story of how turkey purchased two kilometers in 1920 to be able to be adjacent to azerbaijan the newly formed azerbaijan because the vision for today was planted then absolutely right and i'm and and we have about five minutes back to us this is back to us talking about um, there it is, um right yes there. what greg is talking about is this that, section right here this little right. protrusion right there yeah oh above yeah. iran right there that was purchased in the 1920s knowing that they need to one day they, they saw past soviet union dying one day 
They saw past everything. Iran was stupid enough to be like, sure, whatever. It's an insignificant piece of land for me. I'm the great big Iran. Uh, yeah. Wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, so never, ever underestimate the Turkish uh, uh, magistry in the diplomacy. They are, I'll tip my hand off to them. And understand how far back this plan of today goes. Yeah. So, and, yeah. if, and if you want to call me the boogeyman or the guy that's, you know, you know, crying wolf well too much, well, you know, I'll continue doing that because I don't want to uh, uh, be the guy that goes, oh my goodness, uh, I got caught without, under, you know, I had no idea this was even possible. Well, it is possible that it has happened, okay? Right. So open up the Armenian economy. Sure, there's going to be 10% of Armenia, Armenians that will be wealthy. 2% will be god-awfully wealthy. But the rest of the economic sectors are going to start uh, a withering after a slight uptick, okay? And, you know, make no mistake. Make no mistake for those people who say that, you know, Armenia and Armenians have survived uh, we survived the, the Ottomans, we survived the, the Russians, we've survived the, the Greeks and the Persians and the, everyone else. I get it. I understand that. But we're talking about 21st century and beyond. This is not, we're not talking about stones and, and, and arrows. We're talking about a whole new breed of warfare and a whole new breed of economic development. We will not be able to get out from under this if we fall. And if you want to understand that we as Armenians will survive that whatever that rhetoric is, let's bring it back to the diaspora and we should move on after this. Um, we all here are, uh, you know, I'm not even first generation, David, on some, on some side of the family, you're third, on some are you're second. Richard, you're considered first because your father wasn't born here. I go to a parish and David goes to a parish that when you look at the roster of the founding members of the parish, I don't see a single of those uh, those uh, grandkids. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually second on all sides, but yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so for so so to understand what assimilation is, it's natural. It happens. Okay. And as we're comfortably in the diaspora, right? At some point, we'll just get absorbed by the kind yeah. of countries, our adaptive yeah. countries. It's just natural. When I have kids and they, I don't know, fall in love with. Italian Americans or African Americans, right, and slowly get integrated into. If we don't, you know, it it it, it happens, right? right? And to say that we'll be around forever and ever and ever, well, there's only one place that's gonna, uh, what do you call it, ensure us being around, and that's Artsakh and Armenia. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's it. yeah. Would you guys say that if if there was peacetime, there wasn't just a war? Let's say Artsakh's status is resolved. Could there be any scenario where an open border with Turkey, one of the world's largest economies, could be beneficial for Armenia? They preserve our, our sites. Again, this is perfect world that probably will never happen, sadly, right? But like, for example, and I, and I know we're going on a total long run now on, on this topic, but I think it's important to talk about it. Guys, remember when there was talk about Turkey trying to join the EU? Yeah. So look, that would be a positive thing in this regard. Some might, some, might, some might say that it would destroy the EU. Well, sure, but here's yeah. the thing. Oh, I, think, I think Turkey joining the EU is off the table. They don't care about joining the EU anymore. They're pivoting to doing something completely else. Your point... It, well, let, let, me finish, let me finish the point. Sorry, sorry. Because well, at least my understanding, and I was hearing this from the advocacy groups, okay, from the Armenian advocacy groups, if they join the EU... It would require them to protect all Armenian heritage sites. They could not do that. They would have to open the border with Armenia to be no blockade. They would have to recognize the Armenian genocide. Like it would require those things for them to. Yeah, yeah. No, in that regard, yeah. If, if the EU border moves closer to Armenia, it'd be great, but only because Brussels is uh, uh, pulling the levers, not Ankara. Okay. So because of that, sure. And bring the United States to Armenia's doorstep even be even better. Look, if you're talking about in hypotheticals here, the Caucasus is a beautiful area. And if ever there was like a union of Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia with some mutual respect of all of us, yeah, right. it'd be fun. So, it'd be great to understand how that will amazing. work. But we but, but we don't live in a maybe right. world. Right. Greg, that's the point. That's the exact point. That's not the world we live in. That is not the world we live Again, in. Again, there is no I, mutual respect, no, no respect. Yeah, not, but not to push back, and it's not like you were making that argument. It is a dangerous argument to make. I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious to advocacy groups were pushing for that, and I they weren't pushing. Armenians, 
are capable of doing that. And yeah. this is actually, a, 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 yeah. you know, we'll take a time out. They weren't, push, they weren't pushing for it. They were just saying that if the EU, and there's my timer, there's yeah. my timer, guys. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize I was going to do that. <laughs> uh, uh, but look, look, they weren't pushing for that. They were just saying, look, if 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 that was really going to happen, it would it would force these things. So for anyway. sure, but again, this is, this is woulda, shoulda, coulda. That's that a non-starter. An area that it's, 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 not, it, there's, are being well, defended. again, but again, that was pre-2020 Artsakh war. That was, yeah, anyway, no, yes. You know, yeah. it's, it's just not something that we could ever, I wish, right? right. But I don't, it like, is an I wish. Also, Turkey is, an is in an area, and, and I love how Armenians are still like, this is why I think we're, you know, we're kind of cool, even when we're down, that we have the creative wherewithal to, envision something like that even though uh richard's grandma had to walk the desert you know what i mean like that's that's you know what i mean like it's it's like there's so many things that need to happen for that to happen that it's almost right. like a like a like a like it'll probably happen with our guns to their necks maybe then no but i mean here it, i i find it very difficult to envision that ever coming to fruition certainly not in our lifetimes and i say that because you have uh, you've got Azerbaijan, a dictatorship that's been passed down from father to son that has been in place since the fall of the Soviet Union and hasn't changed, and it's only getting more nationalistic. You've got Turkey, who has a president who has faked a coup in order to keep and expand his power and who is seriously pushing nationalistic agendas and trying to create a huge empire. There is, unless both of those governments are fundamentally dismantled, and then the two generations of people who've been brought up to hate us to our core until those people get into some machine to like recalibrate their brains into the rest of reality, then there's no way that's going to happen. So, yeah. I mean, it's almost, I, almost, it's, I mean I'm, David, I appreciate you bringing it up. It's a good thing to talk about sometimes. Yeah, no, I think it's not worth, but it's almost not worth talking about it because it is an impossibility. And I, I have a feeling, I have a feeling. Some of the Davajan class, I'm just going to call Dava them. Davajan means traitor. Traitor. Yeah, yeah Davajan class, uh, the ones that Garagin Nizde has been talking about. I have a feeling that's the level of internationalism, uh, internationalist, uh, what do you call it, lunacy that they have eaten and swallowed. And, you're, and are, you're right, uh, Greg. You're right. I think it's good we walk through this exercise, if you will, so yeah, people sure. can understand that, look, Yes, in a, it would be amazing. It'd be a perfect world scenario, right? But we don't live in a perfect world. So. It's like if we just keep giving the bully our lunch money, he'll quit. He'll quit trying to beat us up. If we just keep okay. giving him our lunch money, he's gonna he's gonna quit beating us up at some point, point. and that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen, as evidenced by these this this next story we're 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 talking about. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, so a good segue. Uh, look, guys. Um, and Greg, I remember we were on the phone talking about this, and I realized, wait a minute, hey, a soldier had just was just killed by a Zeri, a Zeri fire. I'm thinking it's on the eastern border, right? The uh -huh. eastern border, which is Armenia and Azerbaijan. No, this was on the southwestern border with Nahichavan. To me, you guys tell me what you think. To me, this is further. This is a this is a further escalation, because now we're on all sides having to deal with this. Plus, Azari soldiers are still on our land, on our lands, which we'll get to in a moment. But uh, yes, may uh, may this soldier's soul rest in peace. We lost a soldier um, in Yera, uh, Yerash, Armenia's uh, in the Armenia's Ararat Ar province. Uh, Rich, we were just showing that that map. It, this is now on the Nahichavan border in the southwest, not on the border with Azerbaijan. It's also important to know to to, to notice for those people who don't understand why Nahichavan is is uh is azerbaijan this whole area from from uh, artsakh and nahishivan to uh w w those two areas were deliberately uh sort of parsed up by stalin to keep the caucuses in trouble with itself so that we wouldn't go up against you guessed it mother russia so so to keep us fighting amongst themselves and also to court turkey into becoming part of the soviet union they, they parsed up this land and said, well, we're going to pit these people against each other because, of course, uh, the Turks and Azeris are effectively the same people. Not so to mention, not to mention, let's do one more thing. Well, there's a, there's, you keep, you keep uh, pointing towards that city of Gars, which my ancestors are from, right? Up, up over there, right? That, right now, it's because it's in Turkey, we as Armenians go like, well, that's uh, obviously Western Armenia. No, 
that was always Eastern Armenia. Russia gave it to 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 uh, to Turkey as well because uh, what do you call it? Uh, and it was it was parsed out and was and it was lost. So if we're ever gonna talk about Western Armenia, Western Armenia starts essentially a couple of you know like a, a, a few hundred miles past that city. Okay, so we lost territory and we've lost territory and we've lost territory and we're always talking about that very first specific thing that we're still holding on to. And in reality, we must start expanding. And the first time we started expanding to our indigenous lands was Artsakh, okay? And that's how detrimental this war of uh, 2020 was, okay? Right. And, and what, what's happening still. So yeah. let's move. So it, it is important to note that Armenian forces were undertaking countermeasures to prevent engineering works of the Azerbaijani forces, which were aimed at advancing their combat positions. So they were trying to advance there as well. We fought back. We lost a soldier. They had casualties as well on their never, side. But, but they never report on any of it. Um, right, one thing I'm going to say in, in, a, in a kind of a s s segue, but also relation to this. So when people go, you're critical of Pashinyan, right? It's because I collect stories of irregularities and not being okay with what they do and how they do things. One of the first things that happened when, uh, when uh, Pashinyan came in 2018 was the, the fortification of Azeri positions on the Nakhichevan border side, which the previous administrations always made sure that they were way the hell back from the border. Because literally, they have naturally the high grounds in those areas. So they literally have positions. When you're driving to Tatev, right? The, the mountains that you're looking at in the distance, those are actually, uh, what do you call it, are uh, Azeri uh, hilltops. So they literally are looking at the main road going from Yerevan to uh, Iran, okay? And now they have, and you see how horrible that road is now on the other side because we, we, we gave land um, where it literally says, welcome to Azerbaijan. The problem here is the entire Armenian north-south route is within a gunshot, not a missile shot, not a sniper rifle, a gunshot away from an Azeri uh, soldier now, okay? So they could literally tomorrow stand on both sides and just shoot at all of our trucks if they wanted to. And the previous administrations at least try to make sure that their positions are not there. And they fortified them and now they're refortifying them. And if I was to guess, they're even inching closer and closer, okay? But and Greg, I'm, yeah. But Greg, why should we worry about that when they're going to be our trading partners and they're our exactly, friends? Exactly. Exactly. For the reasons I don't understand in which ulterior universe right. that they are going to one day say, oh, peace treaty. Well, first of all, let's understand what is the peace treaty. The peace treaty is complete capitulation of Armenian sovereignty, in my opinion. Okay. Right. We can have a, an entire episode on that. Well, and, it's but, the, the complete... and, and if that doesn't happen, these fortified positions are going to ensure that that happens. That's well, and it's the complete erasure of Artsakh as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, it's a, just the last thing important to note. This happened Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. local time. That would have been our Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. And it was uh, Samvel Alaverdian uh, that, that, was, that was killed. Uh, so may he rest in peace. And thank you to him and his family for his service. Um, Guys, there's provocations in Artsakh as well. It's been a while since we've talked about Artsakh or any kind of conflict or fighting or anything like that in Artsakh. That? What's how that? Awful is, how awful is that that we're not even, we haven't really yeah. talked about it because, it, you know, because the narrative has shifted. It from, has. You know, whether it is the, um, you know, whether it's been the the, the election, if you can call it that. Um, yeah. You it know. looks like we may have, uh, it looks like we might have lost uh, Greg. He'll be rejoining us in a moment, but but yeah, so what happened is Azeri forces opened fire in the direction of Shushi. Okay, now keep in mind, uh, Shushi and Stepanagert are just a few kilometers away, maybe even less. They're so close to each other, you can literally see. You can see Gazanshet Sot's cathedral in Shushi from Stepanagert. You can see it very clearly. So they're firing from that direction. Uh, and of course, this is the ombudsman of Artsakh that is pointing this out. Uh, and, you know, of course, this is violation of ceasefire. This is provocations, uh, and it's violating the, the state, the trilateral statement and ceasefire, right? So uh, it's unacceptable why there's not more uproar. 
I think we know why, Rich. There never will be. There never will be, guys. There never will be. And also, again, context is the mother of everything. Rich, I'm sorry. You were going to say something. No, I was, I was going to segue to the next article, but go ahead. Finish your Indeed. Uh, when we don't know what Shushi is, uh, besides the jewel of our existence in, in that region, besides the important city of Artsakh, hence why they insisted on taking that, and hence why I'm going to argue for whatever that it was given. Um, Shushi is also a strategic fortress. David, you've been there. I've been there. Rich, one day you'll be there. Um, the point is this. Nope. That place is literally looks on to step on our kick. Okay. Yep. So yep. when you and I sit in the diaspora and don't know what we're talking about, one time it's sometimes it's important to actually, you know, open up the, the map and see what is the juxtaposition of Shushi to wow. step on our kick. Not just in proximity, Google. which is only 10 kilometers. Google only 10 kilometers. Already, Google is already yeah, right. Named it. Yeah, there it's it is. Already, yeah. Zangedi is Stepanagert because, yeah. uh, and then there you go. Susa is Shushi. So yeah. uh, they're right there. And now this happened on, this happened today. This happened Thursday, which is July 15, which is today. Um, and then Azerbaijan, of course, was accusing Artsakh of, fire, of, of, of firing at them on Wednesday. So they accuse us of firing at them. Of course, we deny it, didn't happen. They then fire in the direction uh, towards us uh, the next day, which is today. Yeah. Um, again, and, and, uh, you know, and again, I'm going to use my uh, the bully uh, with the with the you know with the lunch money thing because that's exactly what they've been doing. Is they're 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 creating a situation where the people that don't really know better are the ones who are saying, "Well, I don't understand both of you saying that you were shooting at each other, so can you both just calm the f down?" and 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 this is not that situation. This is, there, there's a bunch of different ways to frame it, but it is, um, yeah. you know, but there's only one right way, and that is we are being attacked. Exactly. And, and we're seeing the, the provocations and acts of aggression um, on all sides, literally on all sides and in Artsakh. Um, by the way, the new ombudsman of Artsakh is Gecham Stepanyan. Um, he was saying that they opened fire from rifles four to five times at around 5 p.m. today, local time. So, so yeah. let's look. Uh, sadly, we're going to have to look to this being a uh, potentially escalating situation. So, um, yeah, hopefully, and not. If, if, yeah. if history teaches us anything, it's that they are using these small little skirmishes to justify larger scale actions. And so, I, it wouldn't surprise me if. Uh, the three of us are going to end up working a lot harder than we'd like to. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, in terms um, of yeah. So we 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 spoke about um, a new envoy to Turkey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, UN ambassador from the United States. Yeah. Yeah. So then there's Biden. Uh, Biden continues. I'm going to be critical. Uh, very critical. I think we all can be. Uh, Greg, I, I I'm glad you shared the story on this uh on instagram from a mutual friend i shared it i actually got a few messages from that people asking about this so look biden recognizes the armenian genocide on april 24 2021 he then six days later waived section 907 of the freedom of support act which is going to allow for the military aid to azerbaijan the very country that is trying that was you know, carrying out the genocide still today and now what does he do today greg rich he he, uh, he what do you call it he appoints a denier to be the what do you call it the, the ambassador of the united states to uh to to ankara to turkey yes so jeff flake he's a former republican senator uh he's from arizona right uh, I think was he senator of Arizona or was he senator of I should know that Let's yeah, yeah you're from Arizona yeah, yeah. I, I can I can uh, I can take over real quick on this go one. for it go James for it Blake is a uh, flaccid POS <laughs> that voted to have uh, Kavanaugh the rapey uh, uh, justice Supreme Court justice and he is perceived as one of those mansion 
lukewarm uh, Republicans, kind of like Manchin is like a a Democrat that leans Republican. Uh, uh, Jeff Flake seems to be that one that kind of leans slightly to to the left. And again, this is yet another reason why I am completely, completely desensitized with American politics, because here again, why is it a Democratic president is a, uh, what do you call it, taking up a Republican former senator that was detrimental to packing the bench with a rapist or an accused sexual assault uh, individual, whatever you want to say Kavanaugh is. Um, <laughs> and now a genocide denier to, uh, I don't know yeah. what resume, I don't know what he, resume uh, Jeff Flake has that'll yeah. help uh, Biden in his future political career that it's needed to have a genocide denier um, in Ankara, except for the fact that maybe Jeff Flake is very much, uh, you know, in, in, you know, lockstep with everything Ankara wants, and that's what exactly. Biden Thank you, Greg. Biden. Greg, that's it right there. There you go. Biden is appeasing Erdogan. Biden is putting someone in that's going to be Turkey's yes man. Right, right. Isn't it fair to say that oh, yeah. this guy blocked recognition of the Armenian genocide in the Senate? He's a denier of the genocide, as we've talked about. And, you know, I can't imagine he's going to be pro, well, why, I guess no Turkish, U.S. Turkish ambassador is going to be pro-Armenian, right? But this guy definitely will not be. Um, so, I mean, I hope, I know, I'm sure that he will be grilled heavily by Senator Menendez and so on in the hearings when he goes through the hearing process uh, for the appointment um, as ambassador. But what guys chances are he's probably going to be approved right be approved. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna put him in yeah they're gonna put him in i mean it's not the first time we've had someone who is uh you know pro turkey you know in the government who was the uh we had um who was the guy that lasted a week and a half like a month and a half something like that in uh in the in the trump administration the guy who went to jail and they just released him i'm having a brain cramp uh Scaramucci or whatever? Scar no, 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 not Scaramucci, but the other, the, the General Flynn. Yeah. Flynn was a Turkish agent too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he lied. Oh, yeah. he, 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 one, one, one of the ways that they busted him is that he, that he wasn't disclosing that he was lobbying for Turkey. And the guy became, you know, he's on the cabinet. You know? so, right. so here, 2005, 2007, and 2010, as a member of the House of Representatives, he voted against measures on, on the Armenian genocide before the House International Relations Committee. In 2014, he was one of only five U.S. senators to oppose an Armenian genocide resolution advanced in the U.S. Senate's Committee on Foreign Relations by Robert Menendez, our very, very strong ally, a Democrat from New Jersey. So uh, there you go, many multiple times uh, blocking Armenian genocide. So look, yeah, who, who better to put in the uh, State Department uh, ambassador office of, of uh, Ankara, Turkey, right? Who better? Yeah, for sure. Again, and, and just, just, just to sort of underscore what I had just mentioned, uh, this is an article in Politico from, you know, from a few years ago where, uh, you know, it says that, you know, Flynn's Turkish lobbying client complained about Trump's stance during the campaign. Basically, the man had paid, had, had, Flynn had been paying over $500,000 to mount a campaign to advance Turkish government interests during yep. the, the presidential campaign. So, yep. I'm, you know, I'm saying this because, this is nothing new. In other words, right. in other words, the, 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 if people think that the, 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 the revolving door between lobbyists and positions inside the government uh, is limited to only American interests and big pharma and things like that, but it's not. What we have is we have Turkish agents who are posing as American patriots who are now advancing the cause. And so, and I would make the argument that this is yet another version of that. Yeah, I, well said, man. Well said. Uh, obviously, we'll have to we'll keep an eye on that, but uh, he's likely to be confirmed. Uh, it's just, again, to me, it's like Biden uh, again, dude. Don't recognize the genocide and don't do these things. Instead, he recognizes the genocide and he does these things. Um, I, I mean, it's it's it doesn't right. make any sense. So, All right. uh, so to me, so this is about NATO. That's it. It's about NATO. It's about NATO. It's about that relationship, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh, uh, let's move on. Yeah. You want to talk about uh, the Azeri soldiers in Armenia, because no one else is. Yeah. 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 Let's do it. Um, let's do it. Let's start the next. Uh, 
and I don't mean to be mean about that, but like the, the, the it's like it's like nobody's talking about it anymore. They've just forgot about like ah whatever. They're on a camping excursion. Who cares? What? It's really really weird. Yeah, it's really really weird. So uh, the only article that I found, and if anyone's out there that's watching that's seen more articles, hey, please share it with us. Comment it. Put it on the thread. Uh, yeah. Message us with it. I didn't see any other articles about this. But Armenia is insisting that the withdrawal of Azeri troops from sovereign Armenian territory must be on the on top of the agenda of negotiations between the two countries of Armenia and Azerbaijan. OK, but what's been happening since May 12? Where is the Minsk group? They don't exist. Where is the OSCE? Excuse me, the CSTO doesn't care. Uh, Pashinyan was too busy campaigning. Uh, the soldiers are still there. Okay, what's happening, right? Um, and I'm sorry, anyone who's a supporter of the current administration or the opposition, what are they doing to end this? What are they doing to end this? What's happening? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's like some yeah, collective anyway. ADD. Yeah, it's not. It's not our. It's not our job to answer that, but at least to pose the question for the collective viewership to. Uh, at least ask themselves, okay? Um, uh, yet, yet another time when we're being, you know, questioned, yeah, so and reporting on these things. In reality, there's a thousand foreign troops on our lands. Um, right. And that's what's happening to it? You know. Right. Right. They're trying to. They're trying to force the issue and more concessions on the border. The quote from the deputy prime minister. Tigran deputy, yeah, deputy, the acting deputy, they haven't taken their office yet, is that one day the delimitate the, limit, the, the delimitation and demarcation of our borders must take place, but to speak grossly, violating our borders and being located inside our borders, even trying to blackmail us is not an efficient way. Okay, they need to move. Russia is supposed to send troops. We don't have timing on that. There's no timing on that. Anyway, yes. Let's keep moving. All right. So the next one is, um, you know, about what Armenia has returned. Yeah. So this, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, like this, I think he's talking about, this is how many POWs we have gotten back from Azerbaijan. Pashinyan's claiming we have, we have, we have now the return of 104 captains, captives from Azerbaijan there's still hundreds more right so he came out saying this recently uh we have to keep our eyes on this um but we know that azerbaijan is still yes Here, just i mean if this is in fact correct i don't know whether the you know whether the translation is proper but it says armenia has for now managed to return as many as 104 captives from azerbaijan despite that country's pres persistent failure to abide by its international com commitment to release and return mm. all the Armenian prisoners of war. So this doesn't, the, the translation is not as right. clear as it could be. So Yeah, I think, yeah, what's confusing is it says that he promised to continue collaboration with international partners towards accomplishing the repatriation of the Armenian citizens remaining on that country's territory. Uh, we have managed anyway to return 104 prisoners of war in collaboration with our partners for now. And we will continue the activities towards bringing back all our POWs. That was Pashinyan's quote. So, to, you know, so again, it's, it's kind of not clear. Does that mean we have 104 Armenian POWs have come back? Or is that how many POWs we've sent back to Azerbaijan? To, I, think, I think he's talking about our POWs. So it's something we have to follow um right yeah all right um let's pivot to the constitutional court um and and their and the hearings yeah real quick on this um and greg rich please feel free to add anything but the main thing is the constitutional court they since since the opposition group submitted their appeals on july 2nd they they've had public hearings since july 9 OK, the hearings of the opposition referred to instances of irregularities in signed voter lists, as well as alleged violations in the military vote. There was power outages and stuff on the night of the election as well. 
there are uh, among other uh, opposition irregularities that they that they brought forth. They said, "Look, we are done." They went behind a closed door. They have 15 days after the allegations or the appeals were made uh, to come up with a resolution. So that gives it till July 17, if my math is right. Yeah, and uh, to the, the we don't need to it doesn't need to be a discussion, just a comment. Yeah, uh, we uh, the, to the to the crowd that says, "Hey, man, why don't you just move on?" Well, boo boo, this is democracy, and democracy has these levers. Right, and an opposition has that ability to voice its uh, grievances uh, towards, and I believe a constitutional court is not just some court from the backyard in Yerevan that'll take anything and everything, right? right. Um, absolutely, they've evaluated, and that means that there's enough claims to be to be heard. So, in right. 15 days, we will hear what they have to say. Yeah, but not 15 just, days, in two days. In yeah, two days. Uh, in two days. days. Let's continue. <clears throat> so let's level set for a second. You know, we've got we we've had um, you know renewed threats against the nation. We've had provocations, not just threats. We've had Biden bringing in someone who's very pro-Turkey. Uh, we have Azeri tur uh, you know, troops on the border and no one's doing anything about it. And a, 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 you know, POWs who have not been returned. Uh, and, and meanwhile, we have issues inside the country. Uh, the, the latest thing is uh, COVID problems. So let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they reported 163 cases. Total cases, 226,949 in Armenia for a population of less than 3 million. Go ahead, Rich. So, go ahead, Rich. The worst is the worst, one of the worst rates in the world. Um, again, uh, when people say, well, now is not the time we got a war to deal with, uh, you just take a look at our own community here that is uh, has the very high anti, anti-vaxxer slash, uh, you know, COVID is a hoax uh, percentage, and you start to understand that this is a recipe for disaster. Not a friend of mine, but someone kind of that was concerned about the L LA re re reinstituting the mask mandate said that, hey man, just because we weren't able to take this to the max and finish the work that we needed here in the United States, here we are needing to do masks. Dude, this guy got torn apart. And he was like, whoa, why did I even allow this conversation to happen? So here we have relatively a, 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 a scenario where like a country, dude, I got family members that are like, have heart conditions that don't wanna get vaccinated. And this is Armenia in general. So in come uh, 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 another minor group of people that do want to get vaccinated. And that's the Iranians from south of the border. They wanna come in because their government also is not giving enough vaccine, vaccines and they are tired of COVID as we all are. Um, where where Armenia is only I think three percent now two two three percent vaccinated fully, um, Iran is hovering around the same amount, which is horrible for a country of, you know, eighty million. Um, that's that's insane. Um, and yeah, there's like a like a steady flow of uh, Iranian tourists coming in and getting the vaccines, which Armenians are not getting. You know what I mean? So or right. Armenians are foregoing, or at this point, I don't even know what it is. Which where it is in the pecking order, you know what I mean? Like whether it's like some weird way of kind of reigniting the failing Armenian tourist industry, um, or is it a way to kind of not uh, to utilize the vaccines that the Armenian uh, population doesn't want to get? Uh, one or the other, the whole thing just sounds disjointed and just a nightmare. Yeah, well, it definitely sounds mis mismanaged, right? So they had the vaccine, we're seeing vaccine tourism from Iran, right? Originally, the poly clinics were open to everybody. Now, because of this rush of Iranians, they made the decision. This is uh, six days ago. They made the decision, the, the Minister of Health, acting Minister of Health, I think they're all acting, right? Yeah. To, to make the poly clinics are only for Armenian citizens because Iranians were coming in, taking up all the lines and this and that. And now the mobile vaccination sites will be, will be only for Iranians. So they, they just made that change. Uh, just, just, yeah, it's AstraZeneca as well that they're um, right. administering. Um, you know, I'm sorry, we, we actually overlooked one of the links and that was for uh, the Armenian Ministry of Defense saying that there were two servicemen who were missing 
uh, and, and they might we, be in we, yeah, but we can just glance over it, add to the list of the things that you said pre previous, right? Yeah, right. there are two, are two unarmed, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, soldiers, I think, surveying the area around the border. And mm. just like everything else, with the shifting borders and fog, heavy fog setting in, um, they went missing in the night. That was um, actually but, dawn, dawn, yeah. Dawn, yeah, yeah. Same thing, same thing, yeah, fog, same dawn. Thing. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so we know it's not missing. We know it's ambushed, captive. It's, you know, yesterday that ridge was yours. Now I don't know what Pashinyan and the geopolitics of this caucuses are going to give you, right? Um, yeah, things, things happen. And now there's two missing Armenian soldiers adding to the POW list again. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems like that. Hopefully they're not POWs, man, but it seems like that. This was in the southeastern direction of Armenia, by the way, um, and they are not ruling out the possibility of them being in Azeri territory. So, so you know, I know we're, 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 we're rightfully making a lot of the situation on the ground in Armenia and in Artsakh and with the, you know, all the basics. If we pull back a little bit, we'll see that there is some greater news that is possible to, to unfold for us. And that is economic development in a large scale. And so I want to spend the next couple minutes talking about that. I, I'd, I'd like to offer that I don't think people with money that want to make economic investments aren't going to want to, they're, they're not going to want to do that if they don't see a future. The question is, what kind of future is that? And, and I think many of us would like to remain under the same flag autonomous and grow the country as it is. And I, and I can't speak for my other two partners here who started this whole thing, but I will say that I think we're on the same page in wanting to see this nation survive and thrive. Absolutely. So this next section is super important to me because of that. I just don't know how this is going to shake out. So what I want to show is that, you know, we've got large, I mean, people who are willing to make enormous investments into the country, whether it be Lufthansa, um, and, you know, others who are, who are, you know, really willing, uh, you know, uh, Anif and uh, Air Arabia signed an agreement to create Armenia's new low-cost national airline. So there are people who, who want to not only create economic development, but bring more people into the country. Um, and I, I can't think that that's anything but a good thing. Um, but the question is, how's that going to unfold? Does anybody have yeah, any comments Ed, about it? Yeah, Edward Yernekian is a person that has been already um, you know, credited with uh, pumping millions upon millions, probably the second or third largest philanthropist outside, you know, from the Western diaspora, you could say, right? Yeah, he's Arge uh, Argentinian, Argentinian. Argentinian, yeah. And, uh, you know, and he uh, created the largest, uh, uh, what do you call it, winery in Armenia, Caras, that's, that's, that's his, mm. Tierras de Armenia, uh, and uh, what do you call it, the holding company. Um, I believe High Post, his son at some point was either rejuvenating the Armenian Postal Service. He has had multiple central buildings in, in, in Yerevan that are going to be retrofitted into grand hotels. And the largest of his, of course, of his uh, investments was in the purchasing of the both Armenian uh, international airports, Zvartnos being the first and Gyumri also being the second, and called putting them into the, I think, the Zvartnos, Gyumri, SJC, they're kind of, they're both under the same holding, um, and renovating, taking an amazing, amazing uh, investment to renovate, and essentially actually not renovate, build a world-class uh, terminal uh, for the Armenian, uh, what do you call, for literally the only free uh, and uninterrupted way of entering Armenia, which is through the air. Um, so, and now yeah. he's, uh, he's uh, pledging to do more. Yeah. By the way, he's done that during Kocharan, he's done that during Sarkisian, and now he's just trying to like probably see Armenia past whatever this scenario in our, uh, you know, tumultuous right. history is. Um, the other well, two yeah. items are also actually airline related uh, with Lufthansa being uh, connecting to Armenia directly from Germany. That's great. Um, I don't know about this low cost carrier. Hopefully it could be something good. Uh, Saudi yes. Arabia has lots of money if they want to create some jobs in Armenia. Okay. Yeah, no, it, it's a big development, right? So it's a new national airline that will serve a, a vision for Armenia's fast growing travel tourism sector. Of course, that was growing much faster 
pre-war or pre-Azeri aggression, uh, pre-COVID, right? Uh, so we'll see if this can help coming out of those things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. It's gonna be Armenia's new na national low-cost airline. So right. we'll see, we'll follow well, that. You know, and here's the thing, it's, it's not just airlines. I and mean, we've got the, the EU has pledged $3.1 billion age aid package to Armenia. This is now, huge. think about that for a minute. This think is about huge. That. The United States dropped the aid for Armenia and gave over $120 million to the Azeris to help try and contain the, uh, the Iranian. And, and the EU is saying, that's cool, but we're going to give you $3.1 billion. Right. I, I, I can't see this as anything but amazing unless told it's, otherwise. It's absolutely, this is really, really, really important. And uh, we should be very grateful. Um, we have to make sure that, well, they have to make sure that the money is used properly um, and that but, it goes to where it's most needed, right? But I will ask this, and for, you know, again, because I was not on last week, I couldn't really uh, have the discussion uh, with William and where this foreign money, you know, what the expectations are, you know, on us. Greg? Anything? I mean, uh, hopefully, if they are going to go into, and again, infrastructure projects within Armenia, right? So let's say like uh, roads, highways, uh, ports, airports, uh, education sector, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, uh, uh, healthcare, that is a way that I, I, would, I would envision this is that they're going to uh, kind of pump that kind of investment into Armenia to give it the ability to kind of compete in the global world. Um, yeah, something tells me that there will also be added kind of, you know, hooks and levers. Well, everything in geopolitics, obviously, <laughs> For if, sure. if it's if it's EU, it's going to come with a heavy hand of, well, you can't be so cool with Russia and Iran sucks always. You know what I mean? If EU can kind of uh, leverage that out that, and not, you know, not 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 contribute in that rhetoric, that would be great. But I just don't know enough. And yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, on yeah. one end, I do see it as amazing, and certainly yeah. uh, the Armenians need it. Uh, the question is, at what cost? Yeah, so just to give very quick detail on what you guys are just talking about, it's EU grants, loans, and loan guarantees for what they're calling five flagship initiatives drawn up by it for Armenia, okay? So the 500 million euros in funding for 30,000 small and medium-sized businesses, 600 million euros for, of capital investment in the country's transport infrastructure, um, and so on. So uh, there's- well, And again, but, but, but that would be great if it would be uh, earmarked for internal, right? Infrastructure upgrades. If it somehow links to the need to have yeah. transnational endeavors blah blah yeah, blah, hopefully blah, blah. Not. tying us know. into this uh you know azeri turkic you know wet dream of an empire well that's detrimental but i yeah. am hoping that that is not we will see. yeah hope doesn't seem like that but we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it yeah we don't know we don't know until we know all right so uh let's pivot to the u.s and, yeah. and what is going on between the u.s and uh and armenia yeah, so Blinken and Pashinyan uh, had a call. Uh, this was on Tuesday. Uh, apparently, it was late. On yeah, American Secretary of State, right? Exactly. Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, and I thought this was interesting because initially, this, this report, which is coming from the press office of Pashinyan, that there was more talk about, uh, let's see, assisting Armenia in reforms rather than on security is what it appears. They did talk about security though. I don't wanna uh, negate that. They talked about repatriation of all POWs, withdrawal of our Azeri troops from Armenian territory, uh, that, which were described as key issues uh, in that call. But it's a matter of action, right? Like, you know, I've been saying for a long time, politics seem to be a very slow moving thing, but when you have actual aggression, from a, a neighboring country, I don't know how slow you can go on these things. So, um, yeah. yeah. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, we can keep going. All right. Um, the what's our the next section is uh, 
Yeah, thank you to our friend Menendez. So Senator Menendez, which going back, coming back to aid, right? Samantha Power, who has ties to Obama as well, right? Who's she's head of USAID, right? They only are offering five million in support. The House approved fifty million uh, uh, for appropriations, but this is separate. This is USAID five million. So thank you to Senator Menendez for pressing Samantha Power on that. This is the same Samantha Power that uh, uh, wrote a book about the Armenian genocide, or one of the, the book had a chapter on the Armenian genocide, then went into the administration of the Obama, previous President Obama, um, uh, the great neoliberal president that we've had, and uh, walked back as the UN ambassador of the United States and you know, denied the Armenian genocide or blocked it, then came out of the administration and during the Trump time said, I'm sorry to the Armenian diaspora. And now is part of the USAID uh, director of that and is again poo-pooing on everything Armenian. Can we be done with this woman? Yeah. Okay, Rich, you're, you. Rich, you're muted, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to just give a sort of apples and orange thing here. Um, when we talk about five million, five million dollars to Armenia, um, I just read an article where uh, the U.S. gave more than three point eight billion dollars in foreign assistance to Israel in two thousand nineteen, of which five hundred million went towards missile defense funding. Mm -hmm. So when you think about five hundred million going to defend Israel, and you know, $3.8 billion going to them in general. $5 million, even $100 million is basically like saying, here's a 20, get out of my face for as long as you can. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a big deal to give Armenia money. And I'm not saying that Armenia is the most strategic place for the Americans. But tell me where there's another democratic-leaning country that is Christian in the entire area. Tell me, tell me where there's one. Tell me where there's one so close to Iran, so close to Russia. And why wouldn't the Americans want to build up a presence there? Is it because the money from Azerbaijan and Turkey is worth more to them? I don't know. I, don't, I don't know. No, 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 well, you, you, do that... know, you do know, and there is, again, NATO. Turkey. NATO. Everything like uh, uh, like the, the, as 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 unpalatable as it is to our our American Armenians, and as comfortable as we are here, we must understand that America does not care about Armenia, and it also shouldn't be offensive because it just geostrategically doesn't give a damn about Armenia. But only from that point of view can we as a nation and a diaspora need to start operating okay and then everything falls into place of course they're going to throw five million to us i don't even care about how much they're giving to the to israel although we should it's it's the five million versus how much they are giving as a, a, a you know a aid package to azerbaijan which is I, that, you know what I mean? like it's just I, I get that greg i wasn't bringing that up to, to no, i know it is israel under the bus I was giving it as a way. Well, of I can throw Israel. Look, at, look, look at what America does for people. Context. Look at what America does, and 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 because there's going to be a lot of people that say, "Geez, why are we going to give them any money at all? Why are we spending so much on foreign, uh, you know, foreign 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 spending as it is?" But but if you really look at our budget, uh, that is not the biggest dream. You know, uh, a few million dollars to Armenia is not a big deal. So anyway, right. anyway. Um, what about uh, the, you know, what about some good news? Can we talk about I, do, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do want to say that we, we, we detracted from the fact that it's the darling of the Armenian genocide, Samantha Powers, that is at the helm, and she could easily advocate on our behalf because she already said, I'm sorry, right. and I love you, but yeah, now it doesn't give a that shit. That was a mistake. Yeah. Well, she, right, but she, Greg, she well, Greg, she said she's sorry, and then Biden recognized it, so she's good. That is that man. They She's go. good, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, right? I'm I mean, not I saying that. Rather, I would rather better. I would rather him not have have recognized the genocide and had better policy. Absolutely. Right. Anyways, because yeah, the policy yeah. is not congruent with the hey, we acknowledge this happened. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I mean, just to put a final cap on it, what he basically did was say, "We acknowledge this happened, and we're going to pay for it to continue." That's really what he did. 
So, you know, I, I may be a left leaning guy to most of my Democratic friends, but you, you know what? I, I am never going to forget this past year. I am okay. never going to forget these past few months. Cool. I will never until the day I die forget what happened. Period. And, and I would actually make the argument that this goes all the way back to Pelosi, too. So that's a whole other discussion. I don't want to derail us because she threw us under the bus, too. But that's a whole other issue. Oh, yeah, a so lot. Let, a can lot we talk about something things. good? How about we talk about something good? Can we do that? Let's do it. We're getting there. All right. Um, just recently, the Armenian American Museum celebrated an enormous and historic groundbreak, mm -hmm. which I think is beautiful. Yeah, and David, you know a lot about like we've heard a lot about it. Uh, uh, there's, I think, some of our friends were even in attendance. Absolutely, um, oh, it's, that. it's amazing that uh, it's even being done. It is being done Adrian. by joint and um, in joint private public. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 money allocation. I'm proud of that. We are Armenian Americans. Sure, our tax money can stop going to uh, missile development. And, uh, and maybe some of it can go towards something as beautiful as an Armenian American museum. Adam Schiff. It's, it's oh, very cool. And this actually is something that is a unifying force in the Southern California region, right? So all of the churches, all the Armenian organizations are jointly uh, supporting this. Um, and so that, that's, that's groundbreaking in a way as well. So. Uh, there's it's some really great cool. photos, some great photos there, and actually, there was a video which we I could put the link up uh, on the feed. Uh, I, think, I think we already have it up here. Well, okay, there's no, 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 no. There's probably not time. Is there time, guys? You want to do it? It's up to you. It's okay. Um, uh, I do want to say uh, one thing that I saw in the chatosphere on the different, uh, um, just like everything else, when Armenians think that we're comfortable, we're set, everything's great in Glendale, so an epicenter of Armenians, uh, there's a lot of uh, non-Armenian Glendalers that are not happy about this. Right. And they're utilizing none other than xenophobic racist rhetoric. And these things oftentimes are coming from the right, who are these immigrants, blah, 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 blah. And to now I'm hearing it from the left, utilizing a park, blah, 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 blah. Never mind you that the Glendale City College just appropriated a lot of land to expand and there wasn't even a peep about it. But once the, you know, the hairy Armenians bring, uh, uh, put this, uh, uh, what do you call it, thing in the middle of uh, Central Park, suddenly all the lefty uh, non-Armenians uh, uh, start, start voicing their concerns. That's something that I've heard. That's something that a lot of people have pointed to. And it makes sense. Glendale used to be a sundown town. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's a, that's, a, that's a place that was so segregated in the 60s that if you're Black, if you're African American, you cannot be in that town uphold by the Sheriff's Department. You can't be in that town while being Black until, uh, what do you call it, uh, after sun, sunset. So again, these things come to fruition, but Richard, I know what you're thinking. Here goes Greg with his negativity. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you. We were you. trying to keep it positive, but no, it's okay. And to be positive, um, and here goes Greg. Just yeah, like, I'm telling you. At us. I'm to, because I, I, I laugh at the comfortability of us American Armenians. Oh, we've made it. We have arrived. That's great. I think this is going to be amazing. But understand that there's a lot of people, uh, uh, what do you go, rooting against us. So, you know what? But yeah. there's also a lot rooting for us. Good morning, guys. That's right. Yesterday was the groundbreaking ceremony marking this new chapter for the construction to finally start. It's now, for me personally, thing. because I live here in Glendale, I grew up here in Glendale, I played here at Central Park as a kid. Okay. Sorry, man. I think the wrong thing might be shared on the screen. This is, this is the one that we have. Well, no, no, no. I think we're seeing a different screen. Right, Greg? Are we? Or no? Yes. We are. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh -huh. it's, it's okay. Uh, uh, I made a mistake, but here we go. Here we go. Hold on. It's all good, man. Uh, here we go. Yeah? Go for it. There we go. Come on. Okay. It really was one of those special life moments because I had the honor and the incredible opportunity to serve as the host of the event. Take a look. 
Armenians decided to stay true to themselves and to build upon this community, adding to this community, and being a part of the fabric of what makes Glendale so special. Yesterday was a historic day, seven years in the making, the official groundbreaking ceremony for the Armenian American Museum. The museum will be the first of its kind built here at Glendale Central Park. About a thousand people showed up yesterday, including the city council and dignitaries from across the state. The city has leased out the property for the museum for the next 95 years for one dollar a year. Plans to build the Armenian American Museum have been in the works since 2014. The Armenian Genocide Centennial Committee officially adopted the museum as its landmark project to honor the memory of the 1.5 million martyrs who perished during the Armenian genocide. Also to help build and define the next centennial for the community as a message of strength, perseverance and hope for future generations. Already roughly 20 million dollars has been raised, donated by several organizations and the community and the state of California which has allocated about 8 million dollars in funding. Armenian immigrants settled here in Glendale decades back so the significance of this museum is monumental. And I want them to understand and appreciate America's ethnic and cultural diversity, a mission that is important now more than ever. This unique and first class education and cultural center will not only inform the public about the history, culture, and heritage of the Armenian people, but will also encourage people to see the cross cultural connections and embrace the diversity in the United States. Governor Gavin Newsom also sent in a congratulatory message yesterday, and this is a first look at the museum, 50,000 square feet designed by local architect Ara Malajajian. It resembles the Armenian Highlands. The two-story space will house archives and highlight historical and cultural moments of the Armenian people over the past 5,000 years, dating back to before 800 B.C., complete with an amphitheater, outdoor space, and a learning center. Now back out here live, the museum will also house multiple exhibitions honoring other cultures and a kitchen where people can come here and learn how to cook like an Armenian. So a lot going on here and everything is expected to be complete, hopefully by 2024. Live here in Glendale, I'm Lena Bovian. We'll send it back to you. Great. Yeah. There you That's go. Great. That's yeah, thanks for sharing the image. Amazing. Uh, it's a beautiful looking structure. I like, uh, like what they're doing. I like the concept. I like the fact that it's funded by non-Armenian money. I do enjoy that. Um, yeah yeah you know um yeah i think it's it's really uh something to look forward to right well you know for those that, like you know for those of us who were born here in america you know i've known nothing else i've known nothing else but being an american and living with an armenian name and armenian heritage to back it up um and so you know there are very few times in our lives where we feel like part of something you know like genuinely accepted by the by our host country i mean i don't know how you guys are but i know that's the way it is for me you know like like i feel like an american who's you know who loves uh you know baseball and jazz music and uh and the constitution the three uniquely american things i think but um very few there have been very few times where i've really felt no matter how much i love this country uh, to be part of like to be an american and so to have this kind of thing happen is it's really it's special and important. So I think it's yeah. tremendous. Well said, man. Well, we we have a few other news items, but what we're going to do is we're just going to drop them into the uh, thing because I think this is just this is the right one to end on, David. I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. agree. I agree. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we didn't have a guest today, but we have a lot of very interesting people that we will be talking to in the coming. Uh, episodes uh we yeah and we want to keep you engaged thank you for your support thank you for being interested um david richard back to you guys <laughs> yeah right, well i just want to remind everybody uh that we have a link uh not just the links up on this feed but we also have a link tree that we're going to put up that has links to m multiple things to pay attention to uh, not just some of the news articles that we've put up here but some of the call to actions how can you put uh, pressure on our government? How can you use the levers of democracy that Greg was talking about earlier? How, how can you uh, engage uh, and, and to put into action some of the, 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 the thoughts that we're trying to talk about today? Um, how can you participate? Um, we're gonna have that not only in the links, 
here in this feed, uh, but it'll be on the link tree uh, and just continue to try and pay attention to us on uh, Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we've got more stuff coming up for you and pay attention to us on Instagram because that is largely where uh, a, a lot of our, you know, what's going to be coming up uh, comes from. So, um, and thanks David for continually putting all that together. It means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And our Facebook, of course, uh, as well here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well said guys. Take care. All right. Anybody yeah. else? Okay. I think we're thanks good. Lot, hey, thanks for watching guys. Have a good night.